Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're going to paint a sandpiper in watercolor on a gesso board and I use Daniel Smith watercolor ground. I used the ground to coat the gesso board so that way it would be accepting of watercolor. All the ground is is a gesso that you can put on any surface and it will make that surface prepped and ready to accept watercolor. While applying this, I learned that you only need a little bit and you can easily use too much. It was my first time using it and I actually preferred it over the Master's Touch canvases from Hobby Lobby that I have been using. It seemed to hold on to the watercolor a little bit better and not lift up as much during consecutive glazes. So I will be using it a lot more in the future. So on to the painting and what I have initially done is just apply a background wash. I'm using all Imgram colors, anthraquinone blue, burnt umber, and quinacridone rust. The ocean color in the top portion is a mix of anthraquinone blue and burnt umber and it is a little bit more blue than umber to ratio. I just use the umber to dull it a bit and then when I get down to the sand I switched so I used more burnt umber and just a little bit of anthraquinone to dull it down and I used the quinacridone rust right underneath the wave just to make it glow. Now I'm going to start in on the shadows in his underbelly and those little feathers poking out there just to frame my bird and push him out against the background. It just helps me see the shapes a little bit better. And once I get done with that, then I will move up to the tail feathers because that is one of the darkest spots in the bird and it will also help me judge my values on the rest of the wing area and all those other little areas that you know are midtones and dark values better if I put that dark value in first. I always look for a safe spot to put in a dark value because once that's in then it will definitely help you better judge how dark you need to go. Also all of these shadow colors are just a mix of mostly anthraquinone blue and burnt umber but when I want to warm them up, I will throw a little bit of the quinacridone rust in. And when I want to cool them down, I will add more blue. Here, I'm just cleaning up my edges. I found that it was fairly easy to lift on the watercolor ground. It's not as easy as a canvas. A canvas is kind of like a combination between Yupo and paper. So first wash and you're basically done unless you want to lift underneath. This was a little bit more workable and as long as you keep a light touch and you're not scrubbing your brush in, you should be able to layer fairly easily. But it also does lift easier than a cotton paper. It was kind of like working on a cheaper pulp paper that didn't buckle. It also doesn't peel. However, there is one main difference between it and paper that you do need to know about, and that is absorption. This does not absorb like a paper. So when working, just understand that you have to use a lot less water than you would on a paper to achieve the same desired effects. It's a lot easier to back run and it just, it overall sits on top more than a paper would. The brushes I'm using are silver black velvet and they are definitely known for holding a ton of water. So if you are a beginner and this is your first time trying this ground out or a canvas, maybe try using a synthetic brush and it will help you with water control. Now, as far as these feathers go, I'm just using the shape of my brush and I'm pretty much laying it down uh, tip to belly and making the dots and then I would bleed out the top to get those speckles onto the wing. Now as far as the feathers go, I have no desire to paint every feather on this bird. I 
want the feathers to be an impression and give the feel of the bird without actually having to paint every single feather, which could make my painting tight and overworked. So I just try to replicate the pattern and I try to replicate the texture without painting every feather. I watched a YouTube video one time and I do not even remember the name of the person. It She was painting a kingfisher though and she said when she decided to paint loose birds what she would do is make the area around the eye the tightest and the most detailed and as she moved away from that eye then she would get more impressionistic and more um, loose with her work as she moved away because where you're looking and where most people will look is at the eye of an animal and as their eye moves away then detail becomes less and less so that's how I make my choices as to what I make more tight and what I make more loose Chances are, if you're looking at a bird that I painted, the closer you get to the eye or a main focal point, the tighter it's going to be. And the farther you get away, the looser it's going to be. And it's because I want you to look at a certain area more or look at a certain area less. And the areas that I want you to look at more, I put more detail into. And the areas that I don't want to draw your attention, I put less. So here you can see me just tightening up that eye a little bit more and also working on the legs. And if you notice when I painted the background, I painted straight through the legs because I knew that they were dark and the background would cover it and it just made for a more even wash so I didn't have to separate my wash underneath and maybe get some wonky lines or something like that. I could just paint straight across and it would be nice and smooth. When painting the legs of this bird, my only real concern was just the separation between the front leg and the back leg because they are so dark. And if you noticed on the leg that's closest to us, I left a little rim of light on the top and that definitely helps the separation. And I didn't worry too much about uh, blending or bleeding out harsh lines just because the legs already have some texture on them and it just helps to mimic that. Before I start the water, I will grab my little scrubber again and I will scrub straight across the bottom of the legs just because that portion of the legs should be level. Uh, water, I know this is moving water, but it's still fairly level and his legs are underneath it. So as far as those toes going in the water and the foot disappearing under the water, the lines that where they enter the water should be fairly straight. And I also wanted to add a little bit of texture into the foreground. I didn't want to replicate the picture completely because I believe all the bubbles would probably be a lot harder to paint than they were worth. And so when I splashed in those spots in my first wash, that was kind of like me trying to mimic them a little bit without painting them exactly how they're supposed to be. As far as the waves in the front, all I pretty much did was lay down a strip of paint that was heavier with the anthraquinone and bleed it out. And then I went underneath the wave and in order to separate it a little bit, I made some of the shadows underneath it darker. And the darker shadows will be underneath where the, it recesses up more. So your shadow line will be flat and then where the recesses go up into the wave is where you need to make it darker otherwise you'll end up with a wave that almost looks like a blanket on top of the sand I know you've seen a painting like that before I know you have so here we're just adding in the shadows under the bird I will sign it and we will be done I do have a second sandpiper just like this one 
um, same size they were meant to be a set and here it is I will post that video up later I do not know if I will voice it over because the process is exactly the same as this one but who knows maybe I will maybe we'll talk about something else all right y'all if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you haven't already please subscribe trying to grow my little channel so every subscription helps if you want to check me out on social media you can find me at ashley deboard art on facebook and instagram and i will see you guys in another video next time